They had had their manhood taken away. They had had their names taken away. They Mm. were given the names of false gods and idols in this land. And then they were offered the blessings of the king's food and the king's favor. And yet these boys stood firm. Man, how many of our teens in the church would be able to do what Daniel and his friends did? I don't know. You know, and so it's it's really important that we as fathers take that seriously because with where where we're living now, it's like a modern day Babylon. All around us, you have you know uh, sexual deviancy, you have violence, you have lawlessness, you have you know every man is doing what's good in their in his own eyes. That type of thing, you know, your truth, whatever your truth is. Man, so we have to be vigilant in training our children, you know, to be able to grow up in a place like this and still have a fidelity to God and a allegiance to God. Amen. Yeah, one of the things that strikes me about what you're talking about is it wasn't just that the, the parents had prepared the kids to behave in a certain way. Right. It was that <laughs> the parents had prepared the kids to understand who they were, their identity, because you mentioned their names were changed. Yes. But dads, I want you to open up (laughs) Daniel this week and read through the first part of Daniel and you're going to catch something. Their names were changed to the names of the gods of those people. Yes. Their, their identity as Jewish boys was taken. Not only that, where were they living? Will they were living under the care of the chief eunuch. Mm -hmm. See, if you were going to serve the king, (laughs) you didn't get to serve the king as a full man. Mm. So these kids did, they had major surgery to become Mm. the servants of the king. These were boys who had been made eunuchs. And if you can imagine uh, tough times, right? And knowing who you are, they had had their manhood taken away. They had had their names taken away. They Mm. were given the names of false gods and idols in this land. And then they were offered the blessings of the king's food and the king's favor. And yet these boys stood firm. Will, I, I heard you talking about this in your living room. And a light went on for me because I've understood the call to prepare our kids. But I don't think I had ever put it in the, in the um, perspective of having them ready to go into captivity. Yeah. Having them ready to have their very identity stolen from them. Yeah. And truly we're living in those times. So man, that is so good. Um, what do kids look like? What are the characteristics we see in kids that have been raised to be ready for this battle? Mm. Yeah. And I, I'll just say this because kids are, are kids, you know, so you, you're going to, I'm not talking about, you know, that they don't have fun or they, you know, there's no silliness and there's no, but I think, Kids who are raised to be ready, they have a knowledge and understanding about, like what you said, the identity and in, in where it lies in Christ. You know, so when all these other things of the world come and try to bombard them, they know who they are and they're not going to back off of that. You know, they they understand that they are different. You know, they understand that being peculiar is great. Like, that's not a bad thing. They're not trying to be like the world in the sense of, you know, they, they um, want to, to uh, go after the world, you know. Um, so I think what it, what it looks like, yes, they're still children. They're still, you know, you're going to have to correct them. You're going to have to, you know, all of that. But there's a sense and a knowing I'm different, you know, because I'm in Christ, you know, if they made a profession of faith and know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they understand that they're different and that they have a standard that they're uh, to uphold, you know. And so there is a difference when you see them, you know, amongst other children. You can you can see it. You can see a difference. You know, you can see some things that like, man, they're not tainted by the world in that way, you know, or they're not. So I, I think it's recognizable. Um, but it's not a thing where, you know, you have perfect kids or things like that, you know, but it is recognizable and you see the hand of God on their lives. Yeah. One of the things that strikes me about that story as well is Daniel's an amazing book because it starts out when Daniel is a young man or a boy, right? Right. It goes until Daniel is an 
old man. Yeah, like when he was in Lions, then he was like 80 something years, like 80 years old. Like he, he wasn't a boy anymore. <laughs> right. He had served through multiple kings yeah. and even the rising and falling of whole kingdoms, right? The empire yep. of Babylon fell under Daniel's time mm -hmm. and the empire of Persia rose mm -hmm. while Daniel was still there. Daniel writes over the course of decades and yet we see this steadfast faithfulness. Man. And yeah. what's amazing about the Bible, I love this, is that the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is this, this one long story of God's plan being revealed for the mm. redemption of man and, and for his own glory, right? And we get to see so many ways in which the Old Testament is preparing for what's coming in the New mm. Testament. And when, when we get to the gospels and we see the birth of Jesus, mm -hmm. we have to understand that those wise men in the East were <laughs> likely there yes. because of Daniel's influence yep. so long before yep. he was a man who had a godly influence. So parents, mm. this is a, like a generational ministry, right? <laughs> this is something that as we're pouring in now, we're not even going to see all the effects That's until right. maybe our grandkids, grandkids, grandkids. <laughs> This episode of Rapid Response was brought to you by CTC Math. Visit them at ctcmath.com today.